Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode on V Rising Gloomrot. So today we are going to go through uh, the last two bosses and probably do a little bit of stuff in the new area which is the Denley Farmlands. But first I wanted to get through a few new changes. I did expand the alchemy room here and I did put a door here the for the servants because they were actually like opening the door and aggroing stuff uh, that was walking by so I just put that door there and I'm gonna keep it closed so they can't uh, continuously open it and walk around out there and other than that we did make a paper press which we had unlocked a while ago and this is very handy it lets us make paper just by putting fiber and sawdust. So these are two very easily farmable ingredients and we can accelerate our paper production. But it just requires a little bit of sawdust, which you get the sawdust from the lumber mill uh, just by you know, adding trees and then that's like a byproduct of producing lumber. And we can keep this going until we are finished with our research which will let us unlock some more discoveries in the research desk. So we can continuously discover stuff. Uh, we did get the shelves now, which is nice. These are actually upgrades to these chests. So I might actually make those later on. So we're kind of at the point now where we need to finish up the research part of this and complete the rest of the zone so that we can move on to the next one. All right, another thing I wanted to show you is the new ability that we got from Tristan, which is the uh, Blood Hunger ability. So if we go into this mode, we can now see over all the nearby enemies what their blood types are and what percentages they are. So we see we have a 43 Thief, uh, which is a warrior, and we can grab that blood type to replace our current one. And we can keep this on while we're fighting as well. So we know which mob we need to not kill. The only downside is you can't really see the health bar at this point. But it's just a good way to get the blood types around you. Um, it's going to be very helpful whenever you're trying to get a specific blood type. When you uh, need a, a servant of a certain type. Yeah, it's a handy ability that we can use in the future. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is we did uh, put the... These are the large crop plots. And we did make a little garden here. We have different types of herbs. So they are still growing, but eventually they'll pop up and then we'll be able to farm those up. And we need these for uh, future alchemy recipes. So you definitely want to get a garden planted, especially if it's a place that you're going to stay at for a while. All right, so what we need to do now is take out the last two bosses in this zone. So if we look at our tracker here, we have the Ferocious Bear, uh, which is pretty far off in the east. We'll do this one first. Uh, and we need his ability to get into the next boss's area, which is the Bandit King, which is right next door to where we are. So if we look at our map, we have the Ferocious Bear, which is going to be in this area. We haven't uncovered that, but we do have a gateway nearby we can get to to get there quicker. And then we need the the Bandit King here, which is in the Bandit Stronghold. And it is blocked by doors that we can't break down with the weapons. So we need either explosives or we need the Bear Form, which also has a explosion ability that will let us break down those gates in order to fight this boss. So that's kind of where we are. So what I'm going to do is probably head over to the bear. Uh, let's track him. And we'll know where to go. And we can see it points right to the marker here. And it is indoors, so we don't have to worry about the sunlight interfering with our fight. So I will head that way now. Alright, here we are at the bear cave entrance. You do have to come around this uh, mountain here to get into the cave. And as you can see, there's an exit passage here, which I believe is tied to 
either gloom rot or it's tied to silver light hills i forget which one but let's uh let's fight this guy he's uh, level 35 we are 41 so should not be too difficult he has a uh, few abilities um the main one is the stomp and does a bunch of rocks that drop in the air. Not too difficult to block, just make sure you're not in the initial attack. And then the next thing he has is a charge. And then of course he powers up like, a, like he enrages. Like that. And he gets uh, quite a bit of a speed boost with the like kind of dodge out of the way here. I'm gonna try to Save my dash for that that speed boost. Oh, there's a charge. As you can see, he does like a little bit of damage here. Um, us being oh, there, we go. Us being like uh, a little bit higher level kind of negates some of that damage. Uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing else that we have to be of concern about. Yep, that's the fight for the bear boss. And with the V-Blood, we do get access to a new form, which is the bear form. Uh, gives us, um, the biggest thing is it gives us resistances um, by 25, which is actually really interesting because you can now access kind of a way to walk through areas that you normally would not be able to uh, get to with this extra resistance and it does stack with the potions so if we get the garlic resistance which is like 15 plus our cloak plus bear form we can reduce a lot of the stacks that we get from the garlic damage another thing you get is uh just a fur rug which is cosmetics so let's head back to the base i might actually farm up some more sulfur we are kind of in need of sulfur so I'll do that and then we'll head to the base and the way out is actually up this little ramp here. You can uh, head this way and jump off the cliff and you all will be kind of back to the beginning of this area. So I'll head back to the base and I'll see you there. Okay, back at the base, I was able to farm up some extra stuff, uh, especially sulfur, which we're going to need quite a bit of later on. And I actually saw a brute with 99% blood. I really wanted to, to use Dominate Human on him, but I was being attacked by the Alpha Wolf, and I really didn't have the ability to save him, so I wound up just getting the blood. But yeah, we get uh, quite a bit of a bonus. 99% is really good. Uh, we get the bonus to um, boost up our health recovery, and it also gives us more damage. Uh, with this extra percentage so we're going to be using that to go fight the next boss i didn't show off the ability that we're going to need which i will do in a minute so i'm going to head over to the bandit king area which is once again right here and there's two entrances i'm gonna go to this one right there and i'm gonna do that when it gets a little bit darker and that will let us uh, be able to go through and fight that. It's quite a few mobs to get through. So we'll be spending a lot of time fighting through that area. I'm going to try to use ret form when I can to bypass some of those enemies. But it's really tough because there's a lot of corridors you have to go through. And a lot of pathing enemies. Which we'll see in a moment. Alright, here we are at the front door to the area. And you can see there's a gate there. It's also a level 93 brute here. I don't want to kill her, but I kind of have to, so. It's unfortunate. Uh, two 90 pluses in a short time. So, actually what I might do is I might actually, nah, it's just too much. So we have two things, two options here. We can use this minor explosion box, which is fairly expensive. Um, we'll not recommend making a lot of these. 
and use this to break these doors. Or we could use bear form. In bear form, we get uh, this Q attack, which stomps the ground, destroys massive resource objects. And here's the attack. Same thing. They do the same thing. But of course, bear form is much cheaper to, to do. So this is like one of the few places that also has a lot of villager bloods. So if you want to get a specific uh, villager percentage, uh, like worker, here's a worker right here. Uh, you can do that as well. This is the place to go to farm that out for certain servant types. Uh, but I'm going to try to avoid a lot of combat. I'm going to do that in rat form. So as you can see, there's a lot of pathing enemies here. So we have to be careful with this. The aggro range is still there. They can still get to me. Um, but it's, it's shortened quite a bit. So you watch out for these dogs. See if we can get through here. You go up the stairs. We need to go through here. And as you can see, like it gets tighter, like more narrow. So we have to watch out for anything pathing. Um, if you didn't, you have to fight through a lot of enemies. There's another path here. Uh, so I did make some brews. I usually make the brews for the harder bosses. Now this guy is not too terrible, but he does um, do a lot of damage. So we have to be careful with him. Uh, I probably should have used brews for Tristan to make it easier. And this is where spells start to matter. So I am using the Veil of Blood spell to get more health back. And I'm also using um, the Chaos spells right now just to keep the Ignites and then using the Ignites uh, for more bonus damage. But you will start to use more spells and more strategic spells um, per boss. So you might have the same spells. All right, this is where the boss is. Uh, he has some enemies, which he does uh, start off with. So I'm going to pop my potions. I do have also have a Blood Rose Brew. But you have to like be careful with that one because it takes a little bit of time to wind up. Start with my combo. And let's try to take out these uh, guys with him. So he does um, his AoE damage here. And he also does a charge attack. And he also summons adds constantly. I like to use the adds for more health. Uh, there's a shield ability as well. Uh, it just does reflection damage. You want to be careful when you're, do when you're fighting into that. Because it will do a lot of damage with your melee. And then his last move that he does is going to be uh, multiple charges in a row, which we can take advantage of at the end of that. And the bruise definitely help. I would say the biggest thing you want to worry about is going to be his charge and his reflection abilities. And as you can see, you know, the brute blood that we had plus the two brews um, really boosted up our our damage. And he didn't drop anything. Or like everything he dropped kind of went down the hill there. Usually he drops a bunch of stuff. Maybe I just got unlucky. But let's take a look at the new stuff that we get. So we do get chaos, um, a new chaos ultimate. So we have our first ultimate now. And this is actually the same thing he was just doing. Uh, it's a charge attack like that and it explodes at the end. It does uh, ignite, and it also does a stun at the end of it to everyone that's around him. So our first ultimate, you're obviously going to use that for a little bit of time until you get a better ultimate that suits your playstyle. But this is actually a pretty good one. It's another one that you can use to get out of harm's way. And we also get access to the smithy. Uh, which lets us craft iron weapons the next tier. 
We also get access to the tailoring bench, which, also lets, which lets us craft the Hollow Fang battle gear. But we're still missing a few things for that. And we also have access to start smelting iron ingots. And iron ingots is the next resource after copper. So that's going to be it for the Fairbane Woods. We have completed everything in Act 1. Alright, so let's head back to base. And I will form up some materials on the way there. Okay, one other ability you can use bear form for is... You can also break these big resource piles here. So over here we have the big resource of, of copper. And if we use our Q on it, we can get a bunch of copper from it. So as you can see, we got 106 copper, um, plus a little bit that I farmed up earlier from just using that. Now the cool, there's a cooldown. It's eight seconds right now. But this lets us get uh, more copper. And there's also bigger stone, and I believe there's other resources that you can get um, that are bigger like this. But you definitely want to use bear form. You could use the bombs on these, the large explosive boxes, or the small explosive boxes as well. But you're going to be spending resources to get resources, which isn't as efficient as using bear form. Okay, back at the base, and... I guess there's like a few things we can do in the meantime before we head on over to the mines, which is the first place you probably want to go when you get to Dunley Farmlands. So what I need to do is finish up the research. There is still some open slots here, especially the flooring. That's going to be very important later on. And there's another ring, which is not a big deal, but I definitely want to unlock these things. And it's probably going to require me to just farm up some wood. Um, I'm going to need the wood anyways for expanding the base. And also farming up some plant fiber as well to make paper. And then the paper will just help me unlock the rest of this stuff. That's probably the simplest thing to do right now. So just farm up this paper. And another thing that I, that I did do in the meantime was I made a wall of shelves. So these are all the upgraded storages in... I labeled them all, as you can see. Uh, but really, it's the size of these things is probably similar to the size of the other ones, but these are thinner. So you can fit two of them, or I guess one and a half, really, where you could fit a chest at uh, previously. So we can pack in more storage space. And I kind of like to label all of these just so that we can just so that we can quickly get to the resources that we want to get. I also made the woodworking bench because I haven't made a fishing pole yet. So we're going to need to get into fishing quite a bit soon. And this is a good thing to do when you're kind of traveling. Just have a fishing pole with you and just grab the fish. It's like every other resources that you come across. But I wanted to demonstrate uh, fishing for you so that when you do come across fishing spots, you kind of know how to do that. So let me craft this up, and then I'll go find a fishing spot. You can find them uh, pretty much where there's a lot of water, uh, a lot of water spots around me. Just go to those, and then look for a specific thing, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, here we are at the pond nearby, and as you can see, these little bubbling areas in the water. There's actually two of them, I can see. And what you want to do is you want to equip your fishing pole, and just cast it. It's uh, very simple, just left click, uh, like an attack, and you can see the same button you use for fishing. So whenever you see that explosion, you want to click the same button, and you'll now catch a fish. The It's pretty easy to do, um, not really any much skill involved other than the timing of when you see the explosion, just make sure you click your left click as well, and then you get the items. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's very simple to do. And you're going to need a lot of fish when you start getting into the servants stuff. Which we'll get to very soon once we get the iron and the other pieces that we need. Alright, so now let's talk about the Dunley Farmlands. So this is Dunley Farmlands area. This is the next zone. Uh, two things we want to do initially. Uh, one, go to the mines. And then two, try to find a horse. So a horse will let us travel uh, around the map quicker. We'll need one later on for a spell that we learn. 
Uh, so what we want to do is go in here, try to avoid combat, because it is kind of getting close to the daytime. But that's not a big deal because we'll be in the mines pretty soon. The mines are fairly high level. There are two bosses in there that we want to avoid just because they're such a high level. But the first thing I do want to do is try to find a horse. And there are some places that you need to that you can find horses. But you do also want to be concerned with a debuff that we will see, which is garlic. So you can see our screen's turning kind of yellow. There's these two garlic areas here. And as we go into here, we get into this garlic exposure. I mean, you can bring a garlic potion, a resistance potion. But you definitely don't need it right now. Because all we're trying to do is trying to find these horses right here, as you can see. So in order to get to these, you just uh, hold mounts, and then you now have a horse. You can break through stuff, and then hit F or E, whatever your uh, key is. And that will let you kind of speed through. So you hit your second key uh, for attacks, and that'll let you get uh, a bonus speed. And of course, the main attack is this mount. Now that we have a horse, I'm going to put the horse uh, probably over here. And yeah, I'm going to store it like right in this area. And there's a reason for that, because this is where the exit is for the mines. All right, so there is an exit for the mines, uh, the, a back way. So I'm going to go back to the mines. And the mine entrance is right here. So if you want to see the stats, uh, you just hover over the horse and hit tab. And you can see these different stats here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the, what the maximums are of each one of these. But this one doesn't seem too bad. Especially the, I think acceleration max is 7. So we're not too far off. Kind of halfway. And then of course max speed. And you want to get something that's just continuously better. So you can kind of compare your current horse with the, another one that you find. And you can have as many as you want. You can just keep grabbing them. Uh, so you want to be aware of that when you're looking for a horse. Uh, I wouldn't be too picky about the first one. So in the mines, you get uh, skeletons fighting humans. They'll just fight each other. Don't have to worry about that too much. But once you get past that initial area, you'll be fighting a lot more skeletons. Uh, there's a pathing boss that is human in here. So you want to kind of be wary of that. Um, because they are really tough. They're really high level. But other than that, uh, there's also another boss in there that's a undead. And he's actually tougher than the human boss, even though it's a lower level. But really, your first time through here, you want to kind of focus on the iron ore. So just try to get as much iron as you can. And really, that's kind of the goal the first round. So I'm going to go through here, grab all the iron. Uh, is this the boss? No, it's a mage. Okay. Uh, the pathing humans will go through and just wipe out a bunch of uh, different made, like, undead throughout the mines. As you can see, like, the levels aren't too bad. You know, we're 41, 42, and this, uh, the bosses in here are going to be um, 50s. And the mobs in here, normal mobs will probably be in the 40s-ish, lower 40s. Uh, somebody died. Right there. Probably one of the mobs at the humans guild. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You can just go through and loot it, just like we did with the copper mines. You just want to go through. And then I'm going to go through this, try to get as much as I can. And then I'll meet you at the exit point. I want to show you that. Um, so you're not trying to run back out through the way you came in. One other thing you want to avoid, um, if you're... Out here, you can see these little flames that come out. Um, every once in a while, you have like a little tremor. And it'll start shooting out these fireballs. So you kind of want to be aware of that, because it will put you on fire. And it does a little bit of damage. Um, if you're low health, like I am right now, you definitely will feel it. So you definitely want to avoid those types of... Definitely want to avoid those fireballs when you can. Alright, clearing out the mines. Um, I did run out of blood. <laughs> As you can see, we're at zero out of zero. Uh, your health gets stuck at like one. So you have to kind of go and find uh, someone that you can get to without taking any damage. 
Hopefully this dog will be available. Can we get this dog? Can we pull him? Yeah, there we go. So you have to try to get uh, another mob before you, you know, start getting hit. It's a big important thing. Uh, then you get your blood, then you can get your health back. So, just wanted to point that out in case you never experienced that, what it's like to have no blood. Uh, that message pop up. But you do have to try to be very careful not to get hit by anything, or else you'll die. It's There's a lot of mechanics that reduce your health to zero, or one. Um, it doesn't kill you. Like the burn effects, and then the out of blood effect. Alright, here's one of the bosses, General uh, Krieg. Uh, he's level 44, and you can see he's fighting some of the people here. So, we can uh, kind of avoid him. But you will encounter... Oh, there's the other boss here. Uh, this is Meredith. So every once in a while you'll find these two fighting. General Meredith, or Meredith and General Krieg fighting. So, let's see if we can get them to fight each other. Krieg is actually pretty low. Uh, you can cheese it and get them to fight each other, and then knock them both out. Uh, very little... Very little issues, um, just because one of them will take die in the process. It's usually Meredith, by the way, not really Krieg. Let's get Krieg to come over here. Okay, uh, here I am back at the my bag. I uh, nearly died twice to these things, these uh, skeleton mages. We need quite a few of those, they kind of stack up, it's really hard. Uh, well, I'm not sure where they went, um, usually you can find one of them that survived and one that died, so I think we'll have to go back to the exit. Alright, so here is the exit, you can just jump off here and you're now below. Uh, it's right here, in this little spot. Um, and then this is why I put the horse here too, so we have like a way to get back to the base quicker. Uh, we did get quite a bit of stuff. Look at our bags. Lots of uh, iron. We got a few books. I think some of these, these are hollow fang, so I think these are the new ones. We got the iron reaper, the merciless one. That's really good. Uh, I'll be really excited to use that. It's like one of my favorite weapons. Yeah, let me get some blood. I'll head back to the base, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, here we are back at the base. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before is with the horses, you can uh, you can name them. It's like everything else. You can just it's uh, randomly generated names. You can use that, or you can uh, just uh, you know name it yourself. But you also have to give them water, and you can see there's a timer on this. Um, you just put in just filled uh, canteens of water. And you're able to extend the time, a uh, maximum of three stacks. But you probably won't need three stacks of water, because you do get a spell that makes this, these guys permanent a little later. But that's going to be it for this episode. We went through a lot of things, finished this zone, and got into a new zone. And to get started, we got our horse, we got some iron. Uh, now it's going to begin the process of crafting the things. And then we'll begin the new zone in the next episode and some new bosses. Alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.